this raw starts with Miss TV. Uh, yeah. So, the Miz is upset. He's not in the mood. And he wants Jason Jordan to come out so the Miz can finish what Jason Jordan started. Um, yeah, but you started talking and you got into his face and then you paid for it with a fucking suplex that took out you and your whole gist tarash net last week. Yeah, he says he's sick and tired of being blindsided and cheap shotted on Miz TV. Yeah, your own show. You're getting beat up all the time. You're getting these things happen to you all the time. That didn't happen to other hosts. That didn't happen to Roddy Piper. That didn't happen on the Snake Pit all the time. That didn't happen on the Heartbreak Hotel. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, okay, yeah. So your it didn't even happen on the cutting edge. So your must see TV is all about you being embarrassed and getting your ass kicked. It didn't even happen at the VIP lounge with MVP. But anyway, you have the Miz that basically demands Jason Jordan. But who do we get instead? Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle comes out and yeah, it's like look, ah, huh, I secured a guest for you. You know you want you know, a groundbreaking guest and stuff like that. You want your... You know. So, who does he book? Brock Lesnar. So, Lesnar and Heyman come down. They circle the ring. And The Miz actually starts talking. He does what he does best. He talks. And he basically iterates the point where they said that last week that if Brock doesn't win, he will leave WWE and Paul Heyman will go with him. And Miz says that he's a betting man. He will bet on Roman Reigns. He will bet on Samoa Joe. He will bet on Braun Strowman. All that crap. And he says that good, good riddance to bat rubbish when he says, you know, bye-bye. He's like, yeah, because when someone else becomes Universal Champion, he, yeah, he's gonna, yeah. <sighs> so, Paul Heyman, being the man that he is, well, he dropped the mic at first, and then he picks it up because the Miz told him, "Yeah, if my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut." <laughs> you know that that kitty phrase, garbage. You know, Paul Heyman picks up the mic, and he's like, "Yeah." Huh, he introduces himself, Paul Heyman. He introduces Brock Lesnar, the reigning, defending Universal Champion, and then he actually goes, "Hey, yeah, do you and your wife like to role play?" He's like, "Yeah." So, it's, um, uh, yeah, I'm about to role play. I'm about to role play. And he starts pointing people out. So, Miz, yeah, you're Roman Reigns. No, Roman Reigns can actually do things better than the Miz as far as being believable and as far as, you know, having... But anyway. Huh, yeah, I said that. Sorry, come at me, fanboys. See, yeah, come at me with that shit because the Miz, he's the lowest of the low as far as wrestling ability and as far as believability. And I'll get to that in a little bit. So he calls Miz Roman Reigns. He calls Bo Dallas... <laughs> Samoa Joe and then he calls Curtis Axel Braun Strowman he's like and Brock Lesnar is going to give you a preview of SummerSlam and he proceeds to take all of them out and takes them to Suplex City bitch you see this entourage got taken out way too easily regardless of how you see it the Intercontinental Champion, who, by the way, he didn't even have the fucking belt with him because they want us to forget that he's actually Intercontinental Champion. Why? Because he doesn't even have a fucking match at SummerSlam as of right now, as of this video. And it's funny because maybe they're trying to set up him against Jason Jordan, but we didn't even get any of that this week. We didn't get any progression of anything because The Miz got taken out by a couple of things. A, uh, a basically a back suplex and an F5. That's all the Miz took. His Miz Taraj took more punishment. His Miz Taraj took more ass whooping. His Miz Taraj at least tried to do something and tried to fight and tried to... Yeah. They didn't just get laid out. They at least tried. They tried to do something. They got caught. They got beat down. They got suplexed. They got F5'd. But still, the Miz just got taken out. And he's the Intercontinental Champion. So Brock Lesnar gives us that preview. And like I said, it pisses me off that people say that this guy, The Miz, deserves to be in the main event scene. No, he fucking doesn't. Because he just they just showed us right there why. The believability level is just non-existent when it comes to The Miz as far as him being a fucking threat. And they tried to make us forget that he's the actual holder of the Intercontinental Championship right now because he didn't have the belt. He, he fucking just got laid out just like that. 
along with his mistourage. And it's just, ew, yeah, it's just a damn shame. But they better have a fucking match for him at SummerSlam because it's the Intercontinental Championship and it should be fucking defended. It's funny how this fucker said, oh, I'm making the Intercontinental Championship relevant again. For as of right now, besides the Raw Tag Team Championship, this is the only championship that's not being defended. And at least they're going to set up for the Raw Tag Team Championships. More on that in a little bit. So, <sighs> do you like the role play? <laughs> oh, they got destroyed. I just think that it was funny that the Miz and the Miz Taraj got destroyed with by Brock Lesnar, and they're supposed to be, you know, this this big crew and the Intercontinental Champion. It's just, I don't know. It's just funny to me. So you get Seth Rollins versus Sheamus, and basically you knew where this is going as soon as the match because this is a rematch from last week was Sheamus Sheamus actually wins this week because of the minor distraction by Cesaro outside of the ring but Seth tries to attack him both after the match he tries to attack both the tag team champions but they get beat down there was an Ambrose chant Ambrose didn't come out why the fuck should Ambrose comes out you know so Seth Rollins is walking in the back and he bumps into Ambrose and yeah and um Ambrose is like, oh, so yeah, I told you not to try that again, so you think I'm a jerk? Yeah. Um, and Rollins is like, yeah, you are a jerk. What is? What do, what do I have to do? What do I have to do to, you know, I'm not that guy from three years ago. And Ambrose is like, I'm, just, I'm not going to stick around and find out. Welcome to be alone. I got Cesaro later on tonight, and I'll just, you know, handle things on my own. Hmm. So you got Jason Jordan that had a match against Curtis Axel, but it didn't take place because of Suplex City, bitch. So Kurt Angle had to find a fucking replacement. He goes in the back and he finds someone named Jean-Pierre Goulet, who goes out, who gets cheered more than Jason Jordan. Jason Jordan got no reaction whatsoever from the Canadian fans. He goes out, he displays some strength, he displays some, you know, amateur wrestling background takedown moves, and Jean-Pierre actually gets a little hit, and Jason Jordan kind of tries to go ballistic and takes him out. Still no reaction, and actually gets booed after the match. It didn't face Jason Jordan, but yeah, it's just, wow. <laughs> Yeah, he got no love from those fans. Speaking of getting no love, Bailey comes out and says that she can't compete. Well, we already knew this before Raw actually began, and I think we knew ever since last week that she, now Bailey has a shoulder injury, so she can't compete at SummerSlam. And she said that she, okay, she's injured, she gets booed, she thanks people that sent her the tweets and all that and that's the people that she's thinking and she actually acknowledged the people that was booing her hey i don't know why you're booing me but i'm not yeah i'm not thanking you i'm thinking the people that actually you know sent me the messages sent me the tweets and he she actually picks who she wants to win and move on to face alexa bliss at SummerSlam. It's the boss sasha banks so there's going to be two triple threat matches in order to contend, in order to determine who's going to face each other next week to be the number one contender for the women's championship of Raw. Guess who these two women are going to be in this Raw to, that win the triple threat matches? This was insulting. You might as well have had a battle royal at this point. I mean, uh, okay. Show of hands. Who thought Alicia Fox had a chance? Who thought? Seriously, who thought Emma had a chance? Okay. Who who thought Dana Brooke had a chance? Who thought Mickey James had a chance? Seriously, who thought that any of those women had a chance to advance to SummerSlam to face Alexa Bliss? No? Well, okay. So, Sasha wins her triple threat match against Alicia Fox and Emma. Duh. I mean... Come on. It's just... Okay. It, that insulted me because I was like, you might as well just have the match between Nia and, a, and the boss. That's what was going to happen anyway. And more on that later. This was a douchebaggy situation that they were just like, 
okay, fans, we're going to give you this competition, but you know who's going to win. So either this was like a bathroom break or, a, a, you know, a going to the refrigerator or make a sandwich or whatever. It was just, so, it was so uh, common sense and insulting like. It, it just was. I was just like, man, yeah. Sasha Banks wins her triple threat and she advances to next week. So, you get Braun Strowman, he talks about he, that he likes hurting Roman Reigns, that he's the big dog, Roman Reigns is a pu he's not the big dog, he's a puppy, and the yard is his playground. Okay, that's fine. He said he will be the next Universal Champion. Alright, that remains to be seen. Anderson and Gallows face the Big Show and Enzo. Okay, look, Enzo comes out, he introduces the Big Show. <sighs> so, the Big Show and Enzo are nerds. And Anderson and Gallows are Dr. Evil and Mini Me. That's basically what this ended up with. And we end up with a tag team match that basically no one wants to see because we don't care about Enzo and Big Show. And Anderson and Gallows have had their time as tag team champions, so their time has passed. <sighs> Enzo and Big Show. Yeah, Anderson and Gallows, they actually win because of a distraction by Big Cass. And after that. It was just ridiculous how Big Cass was chasing around Enzo around the fucking ring. And a seven-foot Big Show was hiding. Enzo turns the corner. Big Cass just goes, duh. And actually gets the fist and gets knocked out again for the second week in a row. Does anybody care about this rivalry? Seriously? Please comment below if you care about Big Cass versus Big Show. Because I don't. I, I seriously don't. Uh, just, I just don't care. Because it doesn't mean anything. Unless you're going to catapult Big Cass. But no, he's still not going to be believable because he's going against someone that jobs and jobs and jobs out. The Big Show. The Big Show is not a threat. He's just not. Not the way he used to be. I miss the Giant. That's, that's yeah, I miss the Giant. So, Finn Balor actually talks about Bray Wyatt kicking his teeth down his throat last week and he actually says that Bray Wyatt gives him the creeps and it's for Bray it's not about winning or losing it's about you know putting fear into his opponents but Balor will start with uh, Balor will finish what Bray Wyatt started <sighs> okay yeah what Bray started, Balor will finish. Bray appears, gets kicked, gets sling bladed, and then Bray Wyatt disappears. It's like, come on, yeah, we have the mind games. Uh, last, it, Bray appears on the Titan Tron, laughs, and he's like, now I know why these people like you so much. You know, when you fly, they fly, but they're gonna go crashing down when you do. Run. Ah, uh, I just. There needs to be more to this feud. This feud is just, it's not what it could be. It's just kind of boring. It's just, they just drew that shit together. Bray Wyatt versus, and it, it, look, it, it came out of nowhere because Bray was chasing Seth Rollins. Bray beats Seth Rollins, and then Bray doesn't get catapulted anywhere. It's just, I don't know. What the fuck? Just... Uh, from from Rollins to Balor, I I don't think that Bray Wyatt will ever get to the main event seat again. He won't even get to the mid carder scene because we have a mid card champion that doesn't like defending the title and that is afraid of every goddamn body. It's just, oh, it's just a damn shame. Yeah. So, you got Dean Ambrose versus Cesaro. Okay, Sheamus is out there. Sheamus tries a distraction, but it doesn't work. Cesaro actually gets rolled up and. Ambrose actually wins. Okay, so yeah, they try to jump Dean Ambrose, and guess what happens? Seth Rollins comes running down, fins off both of the tag team champions, and actually, Dean Ambrose, when he wakes up, and he comes to, and he actually contemplates the situation, and he actually sticks out his fucking fist for the fist bump. Rollins turns him down and goes away. He was just like, nah, 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 nah. Huh, yeah, 
hype it up till next week and then just give him the tag team championship title shot at SummerSlam because that's what it leads up to. But at least Cesaro and Sheamus are going to defend their titles as far as we know. <sighs> anyway, so you got Akira Tozawa, uh, Apollo Crews, and Titus O'Neil. Titus Worldwide. Ugh, I hate this. I just can't stand this. And Tozawa is actually going to go against Divari. D uh, Tozawa doesn't have his shoulder tape anymore. Neville shows up, and he's like, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's a little risky going against Divari because you just took his chance away to get the Cruiserweight Championship, and now Divari has nothing to lose. But that's to no avail because Tozawa actually beats Divari anyway with Titus O'Neil sitting at commentary. I just don't like this worldwide shit. But at least, well, again, Neville is going to defend his title at SummerSlam. <sighs> King of the Cruiserweights is going to defend this title, but the mid-card champion, anyway, anyway. Roman Reigns, it's funny because talk, uh, he gets asked about Miss TV and Brock Lesnar, and, he, and Roman Reigns is like, I don't watch Miss TV. I don't care what Brock does. He can, you know, he can leave WWE. I don't care. I, I won't be afraid to retire him just like I retired The Undertaker at WrestleMania. He keeps iterating to that. It would be so funny if The Undertaker actually appears at SummerSlam during that match and costs Reigns the championship. I would love to see that, but it's a fat chance. He said last week he'll beat Joe. This week will be no different. He'll beat Braun Strowman, and then he'll go on and become the Universal Champion. da 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 da, -da, -da. Yeah, basically, that's it. Uh, another insult another, you know, slap in the face. Nia Jax beats Mickey James and Dana Brooke in a triple threat to advance to next week. So now it will be Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax. Duh. Again, why couldn't you just have this fucking match next week? Or even this week? Something. I mean, just... <sighs> insulting us like that, like, the, uh, the, like these other women had a chance to even advance, it's just fucking insulting. Because, again, now... If any of these other women would have advanced, it would have been like, whoa, okay, you chose somebody else. Fantastic. But we knew that wasn't going to fucking happen. And that's why it's an insult to me. Gold dust. No wig still. Damn it, gold dust. Don the wig and shit. You know, the golden age is back and don the fucking gold wig. Yeah, he said, who, okay, who will be his next hero? Who will be his next villain? SummerSlam, his next production, the Golden Age is back. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we don't know. I mean, <sighs> okay. Big Cass wants Big Show. We don't care. It's just as simple as that. We don't fucking care. He doesn't want Enzo in the building. He wants Enzo in the cage, a shark cage. Oh, but Kurt Angle is like, alright, we'll put him in the cage and we'll suspend Enzo high above the ring when these two seven-footers go at it. Again, we don't fucking care. We just don't. Big Cass is going to win. Okay? That's it. Unless Enzo gets free and jumps down on Big Cass. I don't know. I don't care. It's just ridiculous. Because where they where where is Enzo and Cass going to go after this? Big Show's not going to go anywhere. Where's Big Cass going to go? What, is he going to face Roman Reigns? Is, I, I, look, I don't know. Um, yeah. <sighs> so, speaking of Roman Reigns, him and Braun Strowman go at it. And it's a last man standing match. And Strowman actually wins because Samoa Joe, yeah, Samoa Joe, he wasn't in, the in, t in attendance all fucking uh, event. He mysteriously just shows up because everybody's like, okay, where's Joe? Where's Joe? Where's Joe? Where's Joe? Samoa Joe comes out, chokes out Roman Reigns, so Roman Reigns didn't make the 10 count, and Braun Strowman wins. And they, basically that ends the show. So, again, Raw. You better have this fucker. You better have the Intercontinental Championship defended at fucking SummerSlam. That shit better fucking happen. Because, again, that's one of the mid-card titles that's supposed to be taken seriously. Yet, you don't even have this fucker even listed for a championship defense. It's just, it, it's ridiculous. Anyway, that's, that's the show. Um, again, do you agree or disagree with my opinions? What about the results? What did you think about the results? Uh, look. Am I full of shit? Please comment below. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Hey, and set the reminders.
you know, uh, as far as you know, when you can see whatever I pull out, either with me and the wrestling thing, or with me and the middle aged guys when we do other reports and other reviews and so on and so forth. But anyway, just uh, raw. What the fuck? You insult us with these women matches. You insult us with this jizz tirage that get taken out easily. The mid card champion gets taken out easily. No offense. Two things takes him out. Uh. It's just he didn't even have the belt with him. They're trying to make us forget that he's the Intercontinental Champion. Damn, Jason Jordan gets booed. Eh, you got Bailey that gets booed. It's just, yeah. Anyway, oh God, just. Anyway, you have opinions? You have a comment? Please below, please. Ah, <sighs> drop kicks, body slams, throw motherfuckers over top rope, both feet in the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the thing, and I'll see you later credits.